Hello everyone, this is Ishan and today I'm going to talk about welfare in the society. We will understand welfare and discuss welfare in the society through consumer surplus and producer surplus. So let's straight away jump to an example. Hello Sunal, how are you? Hi Ishan, I'm good, thank you. Don't you like perfumes? I love them. There you go, I have this wonderful exclusive edition for you, Eau de Parfum, and I would like to present this to you, sell it to you for a hundred dollars. It's really the best price today. This product's usually two hundred dollars. You're getting an excellent value. Would you like to buy it for a hundred? Should I pack it for you? Well, a hundred dollars is very expensive. Oh, no. I think I'll pay thirty dollars for it. Thirty? You're kidding. Thirty for this amazing product. Come on. Um, I can come down to maybe eighty-five. Would you like to buy this for 85? Well, how about $40? No, come on. You're being stingy. It's also matching your dress, you know. You know what? I'll bring it down to 60. Mm, you know what? I'm going no, to 60. $50. No, 60. Come on. Okay. 50 is too low. Neither 60, neither 50. Oh gosh, you're bargaining. I'm ready to pay $55 for this product. 55. Come on, let's see the deal. Oh. I have to leave as well. You know what? You're the last customer. Lucky one for the day. Mm -hmm. 55 it is. It's That's all yours. That's great. You know Enjoy. what? I was willing to pay $85 for this product. Really? But I ended up paying just $55, <gasps> which means my consumer surplus is 85 minus 55, $30. Nice. But you know what? You're not the only smart one. I sold this product for $55, but guess what? As a seller, I knew the lowest price I was willing to sell the product for. I was willing to go uh, as low as $35 for this product. So guess what? I was willing to go as low in the bargaining to $35 to sell this product, but I sold it for 55. That's right. The difference, which is $20, becomes my surplus. Now, because I was the seller, the producer, the producer surplus is the difference between the lowest I was willing to receive and what I actually received, which is $20 in this situation. So Nalini was the consumer, the buyer. So we call it the consumer surplus. It is the difference between what she actually paid and the maximum you were willing to pay. That's right. So there you go. That's the concept of consumer and producer surplus. Now, consumer surplus and producer surplus together are called welfare in the economy, people's welfare. Now, people would be consumers and producers both. Remember, consumer surplus plus producer surplus will give you the total surplus. Total surplus is maximized. So you would say the economy or the market has the maximum possible total surplus only when the market is at equilibrium price. Now, we will see these examples on a diagram very soon. When is a consumer surplus reduced? When is a producer surplus reduced? This happens when you have a price ceiling and a price floor, especially when they are binding. Let us now look at examples of binding price ceiling, non-binding price ceiling, binding price floor, and a non-binding price floor. And let's see how these affect the total surplus, consumer surplus, and the producer surplus. Look at the diagrams. So now we're looking at the surplus in the form of a diagram. The region that is below the demand curve, but above the price is your consumer surplus. And the region that is above your supply curve, but below the price is your producer's surplus. Together, this is called total surplus. Total surplus in an economy is maximized or consumer surplus and producer surplus both are maximum when the price is at equilibrium. However, when the price is not only at equilibrium, we lose consumer surplus and producer surplus. Let's look how. This happens when we have a binding price ceiling. What is a binding price ceiling? A ceiling is maximum. A cap, a price ceiling, is when there is a regulation in an economy that stops the prices from going above a particular level. This is usually seen in the rental market. So let us imagine this is a rental market, a market for housing, 
and the government puts a maximum price. If this maximum price, let's say this is the binding price ceiling, the maximum price. If this maximum price is below the equilibrium point, we call it binding price ceiling. The simple reason being, if this is maximum, the market is not allowed to go to this top region. You're stopping the market from reaching equilibrium point. As a result, what happens? This becomes the quantity supplied. This becomes the quantity demanded. Quantity demanded is more than the quantity supplied. So this region becomes your shortage. In this situation, it's rental or housing market, so it is a shortage of houses. What happens when there is a shortage of houses? There will be people who are not getting a house willing to pay an illegal price. That illegal price is shown over here. The illegal maximum black market price. The black market's illegal maximum price is shown here. Also, due to the shortage, people lose on the surplus. This region shows a total loss to the surpluses. It is called the dead weight loss. The new consumer surplus and the predecessor surplus is shown by these regions. This region is your new shrunk and reduced consumer surplus. This region is your new shrunk and reduced producer surplus. Now, because there is a shortage of housing, there is a shortage in the market of houses, people will spend more time looking up apps, looking for houses, driving around for inspections. The time, energy, and money they spend is shown by this region, which is also a loss to their surplus. So this region is a loss to the time, energy, and due to time, energy, and money to their surpluses. This is the shortage. That's your producer surplus, consumer surplus, and the maximum black market price. Now let's look at a non-binding price ceiling. A price ceiling that is set above the equilibrium price is called a non-binding price ceiling. It does not stop the market from reaching equilibrium point because you're basically stopping anything and everything to go above this level, not below this level. So the market eventually reaches the equilibrium point and there is no change to the surpluses. Now let's have a look at a binding price floor. A binding price floor is a minimum, a market minimum, which is set above the price, equilibrium price. So if this is your minimum, legal minimum, it will be called a binding price floor. It basically is a minimum, so you're not allowed to go below it. You can go above it, but you cannot go below it. So it stops the market from reaching equilibrium point. What happens as a result? This is the supply curve, so this shows quantity supplied. This is the demand curve, so it shows quantity demanded. Quantity of labor, we are looking at the wage market over here. What if there is a minimum wage above the equilibrium point called the binding price flow? In that situation, there'll be more quantity supplied. That means more people willing to work compared to the number of jobs available. As a result, we have a surplus of labor or an increase in the unemployed people, a surplus of labor. What happens when there, is, there are extra people in the economy looking for jobs? Some of them will be willing to work at a lower wage, a lower illegal wage. Some employers will be willing to hire people 
at a minimum wage, a, a below minimum wage, an illegal low wage. So uh, we have another black market, and this point shows us the minimum illegal wage accepted and paid in the black market. That's this point right here. Now, once again, the top part becomes our new shrunk producer surplus, consumer surplus, sorry. This part becomes our new shrunk consumer surplus. The region here becomes the dead weight loss. That's the loss to the surpluses. And the dotted region becomes the time, energy, and money used, lost by people because they look for jobs of which there is a shortage. So this is your example for binding price flow. As far as a non-binding price flow is concerned, it's a minimum non-binding price flow that is set below the equilibrium price. If this is the minimum, the market is allowed to reach the equilibrium point and there'll be no change to the surpluses. So there'll be no changes to consumer surplus and producer surplus in a non-binding price flow. Now let's have a look at the last problem in surpluses, and that is the tax problem. When a tax is applied to a business, the cost of production goes up and the supply curve shifts to the left. Now bear in mind, supply curve plus tax is shown by a leftward movement. Bear in mind, the vertical height of this shift, this height here, this height, is the same as the tax paid. This height and this height will be the same. That's how much tax is paid. We have, once again, guess what? A dead weight loss. We have a new reduced producer surplus here, a new reduced consumer surplus up there. This part is the tax contribution, the tax contribution by the consumers. This region is the tax contribution by the producers. Together, this entire box shows your tax revenue collected. So this becomes the new shrunk consumer surplus, new shrunk producer surplus, dead weight loss, tax contribution by producers, tax contribution by consumers. Together, this becomes the tax revenue. And remember, this is the actual tax. This height is the actual tax. And it is the same as the vertical shift to the left in the supply curve. So that was your tax problem. What we have seen is, if you have a binding price flow, a binding price ceiling or a tax, the market will be inefficient. The producer surplus and the consumer surplus will be decreased, it will be reduced. Thank you very much everyone for watching this video. Hopefully the concept of consumer surplus, producer surplus, dead weight loss, the black market maximum price, the black market minimum price, the time, energy and money spent in looking for, in, in overcoming the shortages and the surpluses, the surpluses and shortages themselves, as well as the tax problem. Hopefully, all these concepts are now clear. If you like the video, click like and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy economics.